Welcome to Fayetteville Community Church. We welcome our church family and our visiting friends. Thank you for coming to worship with us. To find out more about our church, upcoming events, and other church activities, you may visit us online at www.fccnc.us. I have something really, really special for you this morning. And um, I would like for you to welcome back since September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, seven months now. Would you wel make welcome Pastor Ken back to the pulpit this morning? suppose I'm going to surprise you with the scripture that I read because it is quite appropriate for the day that we are living. It's been a beautiful day so far, hasn't it? I think all of us could uh, have run the aisle about any time. <laughs> But uh, I want to just take a few minutes of your time and remind you of some things that I believe that God has laid on my heart to share with you. And um, the first thing I want to do is I want to read one verse taken from 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 1. And here's what it says. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. I wonder how many of you really believe that we are living in the last days. The things that are going on in our country makes us know that we're certainly living in the last days. And I would like for just a few moments to talk to you about how that we are supposed to respond as believers to what's happening in the world around us now. Let me stress two truths to begin with to you that we need to continually keep these truths in our mind. And one of them is a, a phrase that I would like for you to take home with you today. And that is seeing all of the violence and all the things that have been happening, especially this week. Number one is this, nothing takes God by surprise. Don't forget that. Nothing takes God by surprise. And number two is, he will always prepare and he will equip us for what is to come if we will stay focused on his word. I want to say that again. He will always prepare and equip us for what is to come as we stay focused on his word. Now that's enough right there to go home on. If you will continue to do this, his word will bless you if you listen real close to the voice of the Spirit because the Spirit will speak to you if you get used to speaking to Him. And I, I believe this, that we were born 
for this time that we're living. For such a time as this, we were born. This very week in America, it's almost overwhelming to see the violence and the moral decadence, and there are all kind of adjectives you could put to it, political ugliness, crises like maybe we have never seen, daily world-threatening changes are going on every day of our lives. And they're occurring not just in America, but in different parts of this planet that we live on. And most of us in this room today, we wouldn't question that the world has become a far different place than it was when we grew up when I grew up. In fact, sometimes it seems that things are spinning out of control. We are living in trouble sometimes that many of us don't really know about. But what a wonderful time we've had in the church today. Amen. And isn't that wonderful? I thank God today that we can still call ourselves God's people and we can still see and feel the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost in our midst and let God arise and let his enemies be scattered because God is still on his throne. Will you say amen to that? Praise God. Yes. Now, let me go on. Keep this vein of thought that you've got. I'll try to not get out of control in it. Too many times here. Now, <clears throat> morals in our country, I'm sure you know this, they're snowballing in a downward direction. And it's sad to see the things that's going on. World leaders are today scrambling to avoid a collapse of the world financial market. Unbelievable times. Television has become a weapon for liberals to attack every principle of real Christianity that we have. Blasphemy, filthy talk and language blatantly broadcast over the airwaves that our children have access to. Please try to guard against that with everything that you can guard with. Now, nearly 2,000 years ago, the Holy Spirit alerted us that such times would come. And we found that in 2 Timothy 3 and verse number 1. We read it a while ago, and I'm going to read it again. This know also that in the last times or last days, some versions have it, perilous times shall come. Now, the word know, K-N-O-W, is the Greek word gnesko. Hear me now. Which means to know something definitely and emphatically. So the word of God points us in the direction that our lives are going now and the lives of everybody around the world. But the tense that is used in this very word means this is something going on that is so urgent and so important that it must be known. It must be preached. It must be taught. It must be recognized. It must be acknowledged. In other words, what Holy Spirit is doing, and he's about to say to the rest of this verse, 
It's not optional information. He wants us to really, really know. It is so we would be prepared and not taken off guard when we see these things begin to happen. Because God is not the spirit of fear. The Holy Ghost is not the spirit of fear. God is completely in charge. And as his Holy Ghost reveals these things to us, he is completely faithful to give us and warn us in advance of the things that are about to happen. I do not know all of the details, but I do know that the writer of the book of Timothy said that perilous times shall come. Now, let me explain something to you. The word perilous, it's easy to really understand these different words if you go back to the Greek language and see them. And most of you can get a hold of a Greek, uh, the Greek language if you would like to do that. It says that perilous times will come, and the word perilous comes from a Greek word that is called chalipos, C-H-A-L-E-P-O-S, chalipos. Now, a word that describes something that is very hurtful. In the last days, perilous times, that is hurtful. The word perilous, as it comes from that Greek word, describes something very hurtful. We are seeing in our country today things that are very, very hurtful. And we need to pray for one another like we've never prayed for one another before. This word refers to things that are harsh. You compare them, if you will, in your mind of things you've seen on the news for the last, this last week. Things that are harsh, cruel, ruthless, cutting, wounding, hard to bear. Have we not seen all of that this very week that we have, have passed? 2 Timothy 3.1 could be interpreted like this. You must know that in the last days, hurtful, harmful, dangerous, unexpected, uncontrollable, high-risk periods of time will come. They have been going on for many years, but we're beginning to see them more than we ever have before. Perilous times shall come. Now, the joy that we have experienced in this room already today, it seems a little backwards to come as a message with this kind of word. But while your attention is on what God is doing, while we are rejoicing in the Lord, worshiping and having a wonderful time with him, we need to be also taught the word of God so we can see what's coming and what is happening in our world today. And the Holy Spirit used this word to tell us that the last times, hear me now, this know also that in the last days or the last times, perilous times shall come. Now, most anybody in this room knows how to explain that, the last times. The last days, we'll know them when we see these things begin to come to pass. Be filled. They will be filled and they are filled as you have seen them this week. Potential hurt, harm, and danger. But the Holy Spirit wanted us to know that it will be a time and is a time that is unpredictable, somewhat uncontrollable, we have seen this, and filled with what I'm calling high-risk things. 
Now, I know you're, you're listening good. And I want you to today. We're living in a time and a territory in these last days that is filled with peril, tumultuous things, things that abruptly take us by surprise, distributing changes like we've never seen before. And people, seems like when we get out of the church facility or out of the area that we're in when we come together and serve and worship the Lord, we see very little of people that really and truly have hope in Christ like they should. We hear of the terrible things that is going on. Now, let me ask you something. Where is all of this headed? Where is it headed? What is going to happen to my children and grandchildren and yours? And grandchildren, great-grandchildren, our loved ones, are involved in a lot of things that we as parents should be really careful. And remember this, through all of this and any of this that I talk about, nothing takes God by surprise. And even happening around us today are not, not a surprise to him, the things that are going on. He knew. The Holy Spirit knew. Jesus knew. God knew. 2,000 years ago that the time that we live in right now, this very day, would be filled with a word I call peril. You and I are seeing it more than we ever have in our lifetime. And he used this word, chalipos, that's found in, in 2 Timothy 3, verse 1, to deliver this message to us well in advance so we could begin working toward what God wants us to work toward. And honey, let me tell you something. We've been working toward that this morning in this worship service. Because the Holy Ghost has been felt in here. The Holy Ghost has been honored. God has given us a, a special time today to listen to what he wants us to do. And he's given us a special time to praise his name and to lift his name higher. Oh, the, the blood and the smoke and the fire and the wonder of God's word is beginning to come to reality in our world today. If churches would just begin to preach the word of God like they never have before and declare that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And we are his, we are his people. We're the sheep of his pasture. Thank God today that we have a place and we have a time. We have an opportunity where we can praise the Lord where we can give thanks to him in everything that we do. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it because God is still God. He hasn't lost any of his power. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And no matter what you're going through, God is going to see you through. He'll see you through. Say it with me today. God will see me through. God will see me through. Praise God. Well, hold on, Wesley. Don't get too excited down there now. Now, now, let me go just a little further. I know our time is getting short already, but uh, hang in there with me. This message was, I, I, I done preached it to myself two or three times, and it lasted for an hour, but, I, but I, I'm not going to do it that way quite today, Wesley. But, but the Holy Spirit has faithfully warned us. Now watch this. I, I just want to put something into you today so you'll remember that, that, that we are, we're in trouble sometimes in our country right now. We really are. But the Holy Spirit faithfully warned us in advance that the last days were going to be what we are seeing going on now. Ruthless days, hurtful days, cruel, cutting, wounded. A time that is hard for people to bear. Now, is there anybody here that has not seen this kind of thing that I'm talking to you about going on even in our country and around the world. Earthquakes in divers places. It was going on where in China just yesterday. 
A terrible earthquake killed hundreds and hundreds of people. That's the kind of things that we need to look at because God's Word tells us about these things. And I'll tell you, the Holy Spirit is alerting. Everybody say that word, alerting. alerting. The Holy Spirit is alerting our generation that we would face these chalupas times, which is the Greek word for perilous, that no previous generation has yet confronted. According to history, none, no generation has confronted the kinds of things that we're seeing now. So how should we respond? Now, I know I've talked about bad things up to this point. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to turn the table in a minute. And I'm going to show you how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news to their family, their loved ones, their parents, their children, and all of that. The Holy Spirit faithfully warned us in advance that these, these bad things were coming. So how should we respond to the knowledge of just simply the things that I have already mentioned to you? Shall we stay in our houses? Shall we close the blinds? Shall we hide? What is the proper response to a world that seems to be sinking all around us? How should we respond? Well, first, we are to refuse to allow fear to grip us. We, we just refuse to do that. And rather than run and hide, you're called to follow Jesus' example. Now hear me good. Jesus stepped forward to use God-given authority to cast out the demons that confronted him. Setting free entire population from the fear that paralyzed them for so long. When Jesus came on the scene, things began to change. And let me tell you, when Jesus enters the church with the power of his Holy Spirit, and that has happened already today, come on now, things begin to change. Hearts begin to be blessed. And as I prayed that prayer, the Lord revealed to me to pray now. Pray for everybody that is sick in this room today that the power of the risen Lord would begin to operate in them and that healing would come to them. And if you would confess it by the name of Jesus and declare it that by his stripes, Lord Jesus, I am healed this day because there are things that are going on in our midst in the church that will bring healing, that will bring comfort, that will bring a blessing to you like you've never had before. And if you'll believe that, you'll see your, be your spirit inside of you begin to rise up and God will bless you and he'll heal you and he'll restore you. You say, well, I've got something that's... Uh, I can't operate on it and it's killing me and I, I'm going to die with it. Well, let me tell you something. I'm believing God today that these things are not going to kill us. They're not going to put us down because we love and serve a Lord that has risen from the dead. He gave himself on the cross and he suffered and died so we could live. And I'm telling you, I'm alive today. How about you? Are you? Give the Lord a hand today if you're alive. Glory to God. Bless the name of Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for the time that we have, the few moments that we have every Sunday morning in order to give the message as we have been given. And I want to thank Wesley uh, for preaching the word to you since I have been kind of incapacitated. And I'm not coming back and take his job back. He's got it, and he's going he, to do it. And he is doing it because he's done what I told him to do ever since day one. And he'll keep <laughs> And if he don't do what I told him to do, he'll do what Teresa and his mama tells him to do. Yeah. Y'all know about that, don't you? Amen. All right. Now, 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 let me go just a little bit further here. We were born at this time for a reason. How many of you are still searching for that reason? What you were born for? I, there's a lot of people that are like that today, but they won't admit it. But we're chosen people. And we're anointed people. I, I felt the anointing of God right here in this building this morning. We're a chosen people, and I thank God for that. And we are called by the Holy Spirit, called by the Lord Jesus for such a time as this, which he also calls perilous times. 
And that's what we're living in now. And listen, we got to lay hold of God's promises and not turn them loose and rise up in this hour that we're living. Y'all listen to me. We, we are chosen of God to rise up this hour and let our light shine and let people know that we're not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus and let them know that we know it's the power of God unto salvation. We got to take up and take up our, our stand and we got to realize that we are, we are closing this age that we're living in. We're, we're part of the closing closing out of this age and we were chosen for this hour and this hour serving God, worshiping God, living for him, that is our destiny and we need to hold on to that with everything that we've got. So if you've been tempted to fear, a lot of people have been, or to feel hopeless about the changes that we see happening in our world, it's time for you to tell that fear to leave you in the name of Jesus. Get out of my head and out of my mind, out of my house, out of my body. The world is looking for hope. The world is looking for hope. And you and I have that hope to share with them. And that's what we are going to do with everything that is in us. We're going to share that hope. Now, I got just uh, four or five uh, Questions I want you to ponder, if you would. Just think about these. You, you may want to write them down if you do. I'll give them to you later. But think about this as I give you four things here. Can you think of someone in your life whose heart has been seized with fear because of the events happening in the world today? I see people all the time. What's going to happen, Pastor? What is going to happen? It scares me. I'll say it one more time. Can you think of someone in your life whose heart is seized with fear because of the events happening in the world today? I'm sure most of you can do that. Another question. What does God want you to do to bring deliverance, freedom, and peace to that person. I need a handout for this one, Donna Wesley. <laughs> what does God want you to do to bring deliverance, freedom, and peace to that person that you know who is afraid of what's going to happen? Here's another one. If you'll listen, now watch this. If you'll listen, the Holy Spirit will tell you what to do to make a significant difference in that person's life. What is he asking you to do? The Holy Spirit will tell you what to do. Now, one more. Just listen to this one. It's so much you won't be able to write it down while I'm telling you. When you step into a place where fear or panic exists, has any of you ever done that? You know, all of a sudden fear creeps upon you or comes around you. And panic just... You panic because you don't know what to do and you call 911 and you're panicking and you don't know how to handle the situation. Do you bring peace to that situation or do you continue panicking? In what ways are you exercising the authority that you have in Jesus Christ? You say, preacher, we don't need this. Yes, we do, honey. We need this. Publicly or privately, to bring peace and safety to that environment. Are we the kind of person that's willing to do that? Do we do that? Do we bring peace and harmony and understanding to these things? Now, I want you to do something with me. I want you to make a confession with me. And I promise you this is a good confession. It won't get you in trouble. And I want you to repeat this after me as I say it. I am anointed of God. That's good. Now you said it good, but I want you to say it good again, and I want everybody to do it. I am anointed of God. That's good. To live in this day. It is no accident that I'm alive today. God has chosen me. 
to be a part of this special generation. I love to hear you do that now. So, listen now. So I can share his glory. And his power into the darkness that exists in so many places and in so many people. I will not allow fear to paralyze or to intimidate me. I am fully equipped by the Holy Spirit to live in these times. And I will do my part to bring his authority, his peace, his rule, and his glory into every place where Satan wants to bring harm, danger, and fear. Now you've done it now. You see... America is at war, and to the victor goes the prize of our children and our children's children. War of light and darkness, Christ or Antichrist. We hear these things all the time. There will be winners, and there will be losers. Principles of secular humanism. We see that all the time. Now is forged in the halls of Congress. And it will destroy this nation if godly people don't turn it around with prayer. And unless the righteous people rise up and put on the whole armor of God, pierce the darkness with prayer, Prayer is warfare. There's no compromise with the world, the flesh, or the devil. We must not let a compromise even enter our vocabulary. Because the word says a friend of the world is an enemy of God. And you can't be on both sides at the same time. Make up your mind today to be a person of prayer. You can read the Book of Ephesians, and I'm not going to read it all, but I want, you to, I want you to see some of it. The sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians, I believe it's verses 10 through 13. If you can, uh, I think we have that on the screen, do we not? I guess I got one of your tricks going anyway. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then he said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. Now that's not hard to understand. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. I'm going to stop right there with that. Make up your mind. Put on what they call what he calls the helmet of salvation. Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5 calls salvation a salvation of hope. Hope is not an illusion. Not like secular world, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. Hope is blessed assurance, come on now, that, that good things are going to happen to me based on the promises of God's Word. Good things are going to happen to me. Say it with me. Good things are going to happen to me based on the promises of God's Word. Now, if you will hang on to that, listen, I don't hope I'm saved. I know I am. Come on now. Some churches preach that you can't know you're saved until you step into eternity. Uh, that's crazy. That's not the word of God. And these things, John tells us that these things have I written unto you that you may know that you have what? What does it say? Anybody know? Eternal life. 
I've written these things to you. I'm telling you how to overcome these times and places and spaces that we are talking about today, these terrible, tumultuous times. Listen, when I die, don't spend one dime on trying to pray me out of purgatory because <laughs> I'm not going there. Come on now. I'm not going there. My last breath here will be my first breath there in the presence of the living God. And I done it. Kick the devil in the teeth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My mind, my mind is protected by the same hope that I'm talking to you about today. My mind is protected. I don't hope I can be healed. I know that by his stripes, I am healed, glory to God, in the name of Jesus. I may die before I get out of this room, but I'm healed, and he'll heal me one way or the other, and I'm glad, thank God, that he knows what to do with us and for us. Hallelujah. By his stripes I am healed. I am the Lord that healeth thee. What Jesus has done, he can do again. He can do it again. He can do it here. He can do yesterday. Do it yesterday, today, and forever. Our God is always a healing God, and he will do do it for us, my buddies. I love you. And let you know today that Jesus loves you too. I don't hope Jesus is coming again. I know that he is coming again because the word of God says so. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm quoting, he, I will come again, he says, and I will receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. He said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. You see what we got to look forward to? Let's get ourselves out of the mess that we have been in and go to work for the glory of God and see some good things happen that we've not seen before. I tell you, God's going to do some, he's doing already some good things that we haven't seen in a long time, huh? I'll tell you something. Man, oh, my goodness. Can you give me five more minutes, Wes? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Y'all stay with me just a few minutes. Woo. And listen, if I don't finish this message I, today, I'm going to finish it sometime. Because I've got some stuff in this word that God has given me. Glory to God. Now, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. And I'm going to tell you something. There's going to be... A meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. Amen. I'm going to meet you, meet you over there in that home beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear. We almost heard it today. <laughs> we'll be glorious, I do declare. God's own son will be the leading one at that meeting in the air. <laughs> Don't you like that? That's what it's going to be. Hallelujah. And I tell you, that meeting in the air when Jesus returns in power, whether, <coughs> whether you are ready or not, it's going to be a time like you've never seen before. It's going to take my physical restraint, I'm telling you, to keep from saying to some folks, I told you so. <laughs> you see, hope protects your mind. Come on now. I got some stuff to tell you about this. Hope protects your mind. Satan sees you walking down a dusty road. He fills your mind with fear, and depression, and doubt, and insecurity. You see, that's those t troublesome times that he talks about in the book of Timothy and, and in the book of Ephesians. And when you're armed and you're filled, which is what he said you can be, Satan throws his fiery darts at you. You have on the whole armor of God, and you're protected by a supernatural power of God. He cannot reach you with it. That's the truth. Listen, folks, get a hold of the truth and believe it, and you'll see God begin to operate in your life. Breastplate of righteousness. That's, that righteousness means to be by God's standard, and this book is God's standard. My standard for holiness is not established by the president or no country's leader nor by God-haters in Hollywood. Come on now. My standard is not the standard of secular humanist. And we know all about that. The God who said, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That's our standard. 
And there's no other standard like it. I don't wonder about God's position on the way some people live, their lifestyle. You know some of the trashy lifestyles that people are living that is totally against the Word of God. And I would declare that it would be good for you to read the 18th chapter of the book of Leviticus because it, is, it tells us that the things that people are living, the way people are living is an abomination. Listen, tomorrow, a thousand years from now, it'll still be abomination, the lifestyle that people are living. Abortion is wrong. Hear me. Proverbs says six things God hates, hands that shed innocent blood. I don't wonder about new age, crystal balls, horoscopes. I have nothing to do with that and you don't need to do nothing with it either. Mind control, witchcraft, and Satanism. Those things are the things that cause us to live in perilous times. And it's going to get worse unless we as Christian people begin to pray to God and believe God that things are going to turn around. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's what the word of God says. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man. But he says the end thereof are the ways of death. Many gospels have been preached and are still being preached. Many different gospels. But there's only one that will save. There's only one that will deliver. There's only one that will cause you to multiply inside and in your spirit. And that one is the standard of the gospel of Jesus Christ and none other. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Are you ashamed of it? I am not ashamed of the gospel today. I know that my feet can be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Peace between God and man. Hear me. From Eden to the crest of Calvary, God and man were at war. But we now are on God's side because we know Jesus. Because we've been elected by him. Because we've been appointed by him. Peace between God and man. From Eden to the crest of Calvary. At Calvary, Jesus took the sinful hand. Hear me now. He took the sinful hand of mankind and the holy hand of God and he put them together. Whoa! And he said, it is finished. It's finished. It's done. It's done for you. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Right then the pain of the penalty of sin had been paid. It had been paid. All of it had been paid right then. And because of that I can say, God is on my side today and I thank God that he is. Give the Lord a today. Woo. Every crisis that comes, and crises are going to come, I can say the battle has been won because God is on our side. When depression settles in, when accusers rise up against you, when w wickedness surrounds you and wants to eat your flesh, there's the shield of faith that happens then because Paul said, Above all, take the shield of faith so you can stop all the fiery darts of the wicked. Why? Because Jesus didn't win partial victory. He won total victory. Christ is totally the Lord. When you're walking down the road of life and you're ambushed, get behind the shield of faith in the Word of God and you'll be preserved by the power of God. One more thing, and I'm going to close. Take the sword of the Spirit, the light of God, leading humanity to the cross of Christ. Sword is a fighting weapon to ward off the devil. Bread of life satisfies. Living water that refreshes. This is what the Word is. It's a pillow upon which the saints of God have rested their heads. The word is stronger than cocaine, stronger than lust and greed and pornography. It can pull down secular humanism that is trying to destroy this country. It's the only message that will preserve this nation is back to the Bible, back to the old rugged cross. That's the only thing that's going to save this nation. We've got to pierce that darkness with prayer and believe that God will do what he said. Prayer is the key to heaven, but faith unlocks the door. Power, all that God is and has, is available for you and me if we will use it. 
that's available for you. Many of you in this room today, emotionally or spiritually, or financially maybe, constant distress. Why? Sometimes it's because we've never learned to really pray and trust the Lord. The disciples even said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And we could say that today, Lord, teach us how to really pray. The disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Then I think we, we have that need also. How do we pray? By lighting candles? We don't do it that way, do we? A little story of a father that invited his, his boss over to his house for Sunday dinner. A hot July day and the air conditioning system in the house didn't work. And the father was doing things to impress his boss. He asked the little 12-year-old son to pray. He said, the father said, son, you pray. He said, I don't know what to say. He said, well, sure you do. Just say what you've heard me say. <laughs> so he bowed his head. He said, dear Lord, why in heaven's name did I ever invite these people? <laughs> why did I invite them to my house on a hot day like this? I love children, don't you? <laughs> They'll tell you more truth in 30 seconds than the parents will tell in 30 days. Like, Daddy slept on the couch last night. <laughs> Y'all didn't, didn't get that one. <laughs> you see, prayer is laying hold of God. And it takes prayer, constant prayer. What God wants you to do is pray. Prayer is not sending God to run errands for you. Prayer is submitting to the purposes of God. And it produces boldness in you. Pray that you may speak boldly. And I'll tell you something. Problems in the pulpits of our country, boy, they're really having them now. Watered down gospel. People can't find redemption and forgiveness and healing. Brother, whoever gets up here to preach, preach heaven beautiful and hell hot. Stand up and preach a gospel that will save this country and save our children and our people. When you pray, not if you pray, Pray without ceasing. Prayer will do great and mighty things. America waits for the church to begin to pray. Would you bow your head with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, I thank you for this congregation of people today. And I thank you, Lord, and when we walk the aisles to be saved or to get our prayer answered, I pray that this would be the day. I thank you for it. Lord, I just praise you that we know how much we need you. We know a thousand times more about perilous times than I have mentioned today. And I pray that this day of rejoicing, this day of hearing, seeing, believing, and acting, this day, I pray it'll be such a blessing to people in this room. And Lord, there may be some folks in this room today that are so hurt, or maybe some of their family members are hurt so bad that they can't seem to find the answer to their problems. I pray as our congregation stands to your feet right now, there are those in this room that need to walk this aisle and get a prayer answered. I'm telling you, God answers prayer because prayer is a key. 
Milton, do you know the, <clears throat> you know the song? Prayer is the key to heaven. <clears throat> and faith unlocks the door. <clears throat> Can you sing that verse, Wesley? Prayer is the key. I'll, I'll help you with the words. Prayer, Prayer no. is the key. Yes, listen to it. To heaven, faith. but faith unlocks the door. Unlocks the door. Words that are easily spoken. Words that so easily spoken. Prayer without faith. Prayer without faith like a ship. is like a boat without an oar. Have faith. Have faith. have you not filled the altar already? Because some of you need that prayer. It's time to get out from where you are and just walk down here and say, Lord, I'm nothing without you, but by your stripes, I thank you, Lord, that I've been healed. You come on to this altar if you, if you have needs in your life today. We're not going to ask anything special out of you. We're not going to ask you to talk or do anything that might embarrass you, but we want your prayer to be answered. You need those prayers answered. Would you bow with me? Just, just slip out from where you are. Come on and pray. Just believe God. While, while the Spirit is moving, it's time to move. Move with the Holy Spirit today. Let God arise in you today. Let His Spirit begin to operate in you, and He will do what He said He would do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for these who are coming. Somebody come and pray with this young man right here. He's a good boy. He's faithful to come and hear. Bless you, buddy. We never know exactly what's going on in their hearts. But we know that God knows. We need to reach out to them. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> okay, let's, uh, if you would just stretch forth your hands towards these that are here. Father, I thank you. You know exactly what's going on in the lives of each one of these people. And I pray that you would touch them, Lord. Let them know that you're answering their prayer. As they speak forth that prayer to you, Lord, right now. I thank you for an answer. I thank you for your presence with them. Lord, touch them in such a way that they will never be the same. Lord, if there are others in this room, and I know there are others in this room that are, are searching and they're struggling and they're hurting, waiting and hoping that soon an answer will come. And I pray, Lord, that people in this room would begin to see the answers come. Let them see and know that you're hearing their prayer and the answer to their needs are on the way. And I thank you for it. Now, Lord, I pray that you'd bless this congregation. Thank you, Lord, for listening ears today. Thank you, Father, because they opened up their heart and opened their ears and listened to the word today. And I pray, Lord, that that word has gone into them as seed going into the ground. And that word will begin to grow out of them as seed would grow into a tall tree, that the presence of the power of the Holy Ghost would infill them, Lord, quickly because we don't have much longer to wait on this planet till you call us home. And I thank you, Father, 
that this is the day that you've made and we will rejoice and be glad in it as we leave this place. What a joy it's been, Lord, to be here and to see what you have done in the hearts and lives of your people. And Lord, as we dismiss from this place today, I pray that we will never dismiss ourselves from your presence or that we will keep close to you until we see you face to face. And we thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I want everybody here to hug somebody. Yeah, I want you to hug somebody, be close to somebody, and tell them you love them. And we will see you on Wednesday night.